the Native Americans rushed in and ripped babies from their mother's breast. They beat and massacred settlers in unbridled fury. It was one of the worst massacres in all of the Revolutionary War. And those that survived were in for years of misery. Hey everybody, this is Russ Carson Jr. with Family Tree Nuts, and I'm at the graveside of Captain Isaac Ruddle. And we're in Stoner Mouth Cemetery in Ruddle's Mills in Bourbon County, Kentucky. The story here begins in 1775, when John Hingston led about 15 families to settle here in the area. This was the same year that several other historic stations were founded in central Kentucky, including Fort Boonesboro. The station they built was on a flat ridge above the south fork of the Licking River. The settlement was on an old game trail a Buffalo Trace in between McClellan Station that eventually became Georgetown, Kentucky and Blue Licks. The settlement contained about 15 cabins. In 1776, they built a blockhouse with the help of none other Simon Kenton and Thomas White. But later in the year of 1776, the pioneers were forced to leave the station due to Native American attacks in the area. The settlement lay empty for a few years until Captain Isaac Ruddle came to the area. Isaac Ruddle was born in 1732 in the German settlements of Pennsylvania. He later moved to the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia. In 1775, he came with his family and his wife's family, the Bowmans, through the Cumberland Gap to settle at Fort Boonesboro. Fort Boonesboro was in its infancy, being founded by Daniel Boone just a few months prior. Isaac joined the militia, and they were tasked with defending the early settlements on the frontier. In 1778, he was part of George Rogers Clark's Illinois campaign against the Native Americans. He was in charge of the stores and supplies on the Corn Island settlement at the Falls of the Ohio. That settlement eventually became Louisville, Kentucky. In 1779, Ruddles took his family and a group of settlers to the abandoned Hingston Station. They expanded the fort, and now it took on the name Ruddles Station. Over the next year, Pennsylvania Dutch pioneers poured into the area, settling here at Ruddle Station and nearby Martin Station. About this same time, British Captain Henry Byrd was at Fort Detroit. He was tasked with attacking colonial settlements on the Kentucky frontier. These attacks had happened before, but this time they brought artillery, six cannon to be exact. Captain Byrd left Fort Detroit on May the 28th with about 150 British troops. He also had a few Native Americans with him. Along the route, more and more Native Americans joined them until they had a force of about a thousand of them. There was a few names of note that you've probably heard of, including Simon Gurdy and Blue Jacket. The British had the difficult challenge of moving the cannon, so they went the water route. The troops went down the Detroit and the Miami River into the Ohio, where they went upriver into the Licking River, which flows close to this area. It took the troops about a month to arrive here, and on the night of June 21st, 1780, they surrounded Ruddle Station. The next morning, the siege was on. Now, there's different accounts of what happened that day. Some say that they didn't fire the cannon at all. Just the mere sight of the cannon was enough for them to be afraid. Another account says that they fired the cannons and breached the walls. Either way, the American settlers inside the fort knew that the situation was hopeless. Captain Ruddles worked out a deal with Captain Byrd to make sure that the pioneers were treated as British captives and that no one would be harmed. But the Shawnee ignored this, and they rushed the fort for plunder, slashing anyone that got in their way. Byrd himself later wrote, they rushed in, tore the poor children from their mother's breast, and killed and wounded many. Captain Ruddle's three-year-old son was one of the ones that were murdered. And it is said that 20 souls perished in that ruthless, vicious attack. And I'd like you to take just a second and let that scene sink in. Too often, these are the things that our pioneer ancestors had to deal with. We can't even comprehend that today. The group of British and Native Americans were now ready to attack the next fort, Martin Station. But before they did, Captain Byrd negotiated with the Native Americans to make sure that any prisoners would be handed over to the British and not killed like they were here at Ruddles. 
Martin Station was just a few miles away and they had heard the gunfire and the cannon shots and they knew that something was coming. The settlers at Martin Station surrendered without a shot being fired. And then a small band of Native Americans split off to attack Grant Station, which was burned to the ground and three settlers were killed. They had their eyes set on Lexington, the largest settlement in the area. But Captain Bird convinced them that their supplies was too low and they had too many prisoners to handle already as it was. And it was time to head back to Fort Detroit. Now began the horrific journey to Fort Detroit. The British and Native Americans had taken about 470 American prisoners. And those that were too young or too old or too sick to keep up were viciously killed along the way. The further they went, more and more Native Americans split off from the group and they often took several prisoners with them. By the time the British arrived at Fort Detroit, they had lost about a third of their captives. The settlers left at the pioneer settlements in Kentucky were now in tremendous fear. And many of them attempted to go back home, but George Rogers Clark blocked the road through the Cumberland Gap. And here he recruited many men on his retaliation raids against the Native Americans in the Ohio country. Now, Captain Ruddles himself was separated from his wife and children. He protested to the camp commander that Captain Byrd had not lived up to his side of the bargain for the surrender of the fort. He was eventually reunited with his wife and two daughters, but his sons were adopted into Shawnee families. His son, Stephen, was 12 years old at the time of the attack. He was adopted into the family group of the Shawnee chief Blackfish and lived as a brother to Tecumseh. He lived as a Shawnee for 20 years. And when he came home, he never cut his hair, he wore earrings and lived such as a Native American his entire life. Later on, he became a minister and moved to Missouri and eventually settled and died in Illinois. Isaac's other son, Abraham, was only six years old at the time of the attack. And he was finally returned in 1794 and he could barely speak English. When he was finally reunited with his family, he worked in his father's mills for several years before settling and eventually dying in Arkansas. Isaac and his family with the other settlers were finally released at the end of the Revolutionary War in 1782. The family returned to Virginia, but Isaac actually faced charges of treason for his relationship with the Commandant at Fort Detroit. Many said that Ruddles collaborated with the Commandant and his relationship was a little bit too close and it was probably due to the fact that both men were Masons. Luckily, Ruddles was acquitted of those charges. In 1783, Ruddles wrote down his account of what happened at the siege of Ruddles Station. And this account is very valuable to all of us today to know what happened here. The Ruddles family moved back to Bourbon County in 1784. And in 1788, he built a grist mill right here in this area. In 1795, he built a sawmill. His son Abraham ran the sawmill until he moved to Arkansas. He also donated land for the Stoner Mouth Church and Cemetery, and that's where we are today. Captain Isaac Ruddles died in January of 1812, and he's buried right here. A town rose around the Ruddles settlement, and a cotton mill was built in 1828 and operated until 1855. There was tremendous industry in the area, and of course, several bourbon distilleries. Today, it's a little small town USA, basically just a little curve with a group of houses. So here we are at the gravesite of Captain Isaac Ruddle, the founder of Ruddle Station, the site of a horrific event in American history that most people probably have never heard about, but definitely one we should never forget. And remember, family tree nuts. Let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree. Like what you see? Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the little bell so you get notifications as to when we post new videos. And you can find out more about us and contact us at familytreenuts.org.